This is the Pissa Fun Stone ST40 Pissa Fun Saltwater Rated Flagship Spinning Reel. If you don't know who Pissa Fun is, they're another D2C fishing tackle manufacturer or direct to consumer, and you'll find their gear all over Amazon and eBay. Now, they sent me this reel in response to my Pissa Fun Honor HR30 reel review. And before I give, you know, real reviews out, uh, before I actually post the video, I normally provide the feedback directly to the uh, marketing group that sent me their sample. And if you're interested in the review for this reel, check the end screen, and you'll see that I've had some critiques uh, for this reel, despite some awesome catches that I've had with it. I put about 15 hours on this reel, only about 10 hours on this reel, but enough to get a good idea of its capabilities and opportunities for improvement. I have some pretty cool footage of a catch on this reel, and uh, you know, this reel at its price point has a lot of competition since its initial release. Before we get to that, let's cover the specs from the top down. As mentioned, the Pissafun Stone is Pissafun's flagship saltwater rated spinning reel. It comes in two sizes, the ST20 and the ST40. The 20 stands for 2000 really, and the ST40 is good for a 4000 size reel. It's comparable to a Pen 4000. Here's a Fierce 2 3000 to give you a good idea of scale. And uh, here's Daiwa's BG 4000 to give you a good idea of you know what a 4000 Pissa Fun Reel looks like against a Daiwa BG. It looks like a huge uh, you know difference, but as we all know, Daiwa's run pretty large when it comes to spinning reels. The stone has a plastic drag cap, has infinite clicks, and you hear a pretty quick click engagement as you turn through the drag cycle. And I just wanted to show you really quick because this is their flagship reel. It has a pretty decent seal underneath the drag cap to keep salt water out. Uh, you'll see the cups in there, the top cup that covers the uh, carbon drag stack. Rated at 25 pounds of, uh, of drag. Here's the bottom cup. You'll notice that there's two bearings to support the spool along with the bushing system to help keep salt water out from the bottom. 25 pounds of drag, that's a lot of drag for this reel. And uh, you know, if I could give a message out to any of these manufacturers, don't bench your drag ratings so high. I understand that you don't have you know, as big of a advertising budget as the big players out there like the Pens, the Shimanos, and the Daiwas, and you need those big numbers to grab you know, eyeballs when it comes to you know, people searching for uh, spinning reels online. And oftentimes what manufacturers do is they bench their drag numbers super high, way beyond the, you know, really the what I'll call, you know, realistic capabilities of a spinning reel. Now imagine, you know, a fish that can truly put 25 pounds of pressure on a spinning reel. There's a good chance you're not going to want a reel this small, regardless of the manufacturer. I mean, this BG 4000 has, you know, Daiwa's really well-known ATD drag system, and this, you know, tops out at about 17 pounds of drag. I think the Pen Battle 2, their HT100 drag uh, rating is only 15 pounds. If there's any takeaway from this review, it's that Pissafun walks back from the super high drag benchmark and focus instead on the usability of the drag and the performance of the drag. You know, one of the benefits of having a smaller drag rating or smaller drag discs and improved spool line capacity. Win-win. The stone has a CNC'd aluminum spool. It's not braid ready, it doesn't have the rubber backing band that a lot of reels in the $80 to $100 range are starting to come out with. Even reels in the $60 to $70 range, you're starting to see that a standard in a lot of those reel offerings. It doesn't come with guide rings either. Again, another standard that's uh, pretty common with these $100 pens, these $100 Daiwas. So, you know, if Pissafun wants to keep up, I suggest putting in uh, the extra effort and adding those little details to their spool. It has a pretty nice lip, uh, you know, Braid really flies off this reel. Never had a casting issue with this reel. No wind knots, and uh, pretty even line lay. Uh, I'm really surprised with how even uh, Pissafun's line lays are compared to pens. Frankly, my Fierce 2, my Battle 2 came with washers to help adjust the spool height to really dial in the line lay of those reels. And uh, you know, right out of the box, the Honor HR30 and the Stone SD40 have perfect line lay. The Stone SD40's line capacity rating is 220 yards, 12 pound braid or 285 yards of 10 pound mono. And honestly, I think that's a little generous. And it's funny, in the Amazon listing and all their literature on the box, on eBay, um, I can't really find any line ratings for anything above 12 pound braid. And you know, for a reel that's rated with 25 pounds of drag, I would think they would, you know, really promote heavier braids uh, for this reel. And again, you know, 25 pounds of drag creates a, a lot of drag uh, washer surface area, which really reduces the line capacity of the spool. Uh, personally, I think I've only been able to get 150 yards of 30 pound braid, a uh, suffix 832 if you want to be specific. Now let's compare the line capacity of 10 pound mono on the ST40 versus the Daiwa BG. 285 yards of 10 pound mono, 
versus 300 yards of 10 pound mono. Now look at the visual difference between the BG4000 and the Stone ST40. Uh, I guarantee you the center of this spool is a lot thinner than this spool. So are you really telling me that there's only a 15 yard difference in line capacity? I don't think so. Uh, realistically, I mean, maybe they benched, uh, you know, this, the line capacity of this spool using super, super thin Japanese braid, like a samurai braid or something like that. If you're using a standard uh, braid thickness, again, if you're using this 4,000 size reel with this much drag, you're probably throwing on 25 to 30 pound test line. And with such a high drag rating and a relatively small reel, you're kind of painting yourself into a corner. To really utilize the full drag rating of this reel, to utilize 25 pounds of pressure, you're probably going to go in with, you know, PE line rated at 25 30 to 35 pounds and you're opting to go with large drag washers at the expense of line capacity another thing that you'll notice about this spool is that it's heavily ported i think that's done one in part to save weight yes but two i think it's done for aesthetics and uh man look at those windows i mean you can see practically right through the entire reel and uh you know although it looks cool it does expose the retention cap for the body and the main drive shaft there uh, to saltwater spray. So this is a saltwater rated reel. It does have uh, you know some saltwater protection built in. We'll get to that. I found that you know while surf casting with this reel, you'll get a lot of salt and sand at the top of the rotor. Oh, and one more thing to harp on this spool. I promise this is the last thing. Uh, it does come with a line keeper, but it's tucked up so tight to the spool that you really can't get anything over a 30 pound braid or you know 12 pound mono uh, tied to it. I've tried to put 20 pound, uh, you know, 20, 30 pound floral leaders under this, and it just won't take. So I don't suggest that you try to peel it out. I suggest that you you know put the braid under and then wrap your spool with the leader and a rubber band. The piston on stone comes with an aluminum rotor, pretty well balanced. Uh, you know, pretty stiff when I squeeze it like this, never felt it flex while catching anything. The Stone ST40 has a 5.2 to 1 gear ratio, or 5.2 turns of the rotor for every one turn of the handle, and that'll give you 33 and a half inches of line retrieve. To give you an example of competing reels, the Daiwa BG4000 has a 5.7 to 1 gear ratio, while the Battle 2 has a 6.2 to 1 gear ratio. So this reel, you know, is on the slower side, and I definitely think that it's intended to give you a little more power, um, you know, compared to those reels. Um, you know, they do give you a round knob, uh, I'll get to that. And I found that round knobs do give you a lot of leverage, so that combined with the slower gear ratio, this really does make this reel a nice light tackle vertical option. The stone has a nice thick anodized aluminum bail wire, ends in a nice drop line roller design here, braid ready line roller with uh, one bearing in there. And the bail mech spring is pretty strong, uh, not, you know, pen strong, but, you know, stronger than the BG and uh, auto trips, of course, uh, the ST20 and the ST40 auto trip. Don't auto trip your bales, it's bad for the reel, uh, but I've never had a miscast or a chopped off lure as a result of a miscast, as a result of a weak bail mech spring. Pretty strong, I dig it. This is a full alloy spinning reel, has an all aluminum body with a little cutout for show, all aluminum side plate and all aluminum rotor. It's got a paint job, uh, it's uh, got a green and silver flake, hopefully that's showing up in the camera and it's got a pretty nice clear coat. You know, I put 10 hours in salt water strictly and haven't had any problems with corrosions or chips or anything like that. It's held up pretty well. This reel has, you guessed it, nine plus one ball bearings. I've never seen a reel advertise a ball bearing count with such large copy. Uh, stainless steel ball bearings, they feel pretty smooth. Uh, you know, just as smooth as my pen battle too. We'll see if they hold up. Uh, one thing I will mention, in within the same Amazon listing, they say that the ball bearings are sealed in one part of the ad and shielded in the other part. Uh, if this is their true flagship, you know, saltwater rated spinning reel, I would hope that they're sealed. Uh, for an $80 to $100 price range, this reel comes in at MSRP, $80 for the ST40 size. You know, you're competing with reels that are sealed. Uh, the Tsunami Shield for $100 is a completely sealed reel or, you know, almost completely sealed. Um, so I would hope that, you know, for competitive sake, that the stone at least has sealed bearings. The Pistol Fun Stone has a stainless steel main shaft. You can kind of tell because you can actually see it pretty easily in these huge ports here. It has a brass pinion gear and what I think is an aluminum main gear. I know the Honor has an aluminum main gear, which is relatively small. Uh, the Pistol Fun Viper, formerly known as the Venom, also has an aluminum main gear. So I wouldn't be surprised if the stone also has an aluminum main gear. The real arm has a nice average length, and the real foot is a nice average size too. Uh, absolutely no problem sticking this on my 9 foot Penn Battalion Surf Rod or my 6 foot 6 Shimano Travala. 
Uh, one thing I will notice that the build quality and the molding of the body isn't 100%. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little over molding on some of the seams here. Um, but, you know, otherwise it's, you know, pretty true. Um, super solid, uh, really tight. Uh, you know, just as stiff as my Pen Battle, just as stiff as my Pen Clash, just as stiff as that Daiwa BG. And another thing I noticed in the ongoing battle between the Amazon listing and reality, the Amazon listing says that the handle is made out of stainless steel when it in fact definitely isn't. This is anodized aluminum. How do I know? Well, this is a refrigerator magnet. This is a stainless steel butter knife, right? I think you know where I'm going with this. I put that magnet up against the stainless steel handle. Definitely aluminum. And actually that's a good thing. If this was truly stainless steel, it'd probably weigh a quarter ounce more than the aluminum handle. And you know, it adds to the expense of the manufacturing this reel. Stainless steel is actually a little more difficult to work with versus aluminum. So I'm actually happy that it's really aluminum. The aluminum handle is interchangeable from left to right. Simply unscrew the cap here and replace it with the handle. And the handle will fold. Or will it? Uh, one thing I noticed right away when I put this reel together for the first time is when I back this out uh, to fold it, check this out, it doesn't fold. You would think that this aluminum piece here would be like a slip collar and slide this way, but it doesn't. There's a little pivot joint here and there's a little axle slot here for the uh, collar to slide out so this could fold tight to the body. But if you look inside, I don't know if you can see it, but there's a retention screw that holds this assembly, this little housing, this collar, directly to the exterior handle. The Pacifone Honors handle folds in. I think their Viper handle folds in. I have no clue why this is a fixed handle with this uh, pivot joint here. If they wanted a fixed handle like the Daiwa BG, why not make it out of one piece of aluminum? I mean, by having this pivot joint here and this little slot here, it's just an area for corrosion to build up and it's another point of failure that's unnecessary. The ST40 comes with a rounded EVA knob. And I really like rounded EVA knobs and spinning reels, even 4,000 size reels, because it's really comfortable when you're surf casting and you get a lot of leverage if you're vertical jigging. The reel has a really solid anti-reverse, uh, you know, just as solid as my Pen Battle 2, uh, maybe not quite as solid as that Daiwa BG, and it does have an anti-reverse switch that's tucked up nice and high on the front of the body underneath this bowl, unlike the Honor, which puts their anti-reverse switch right here. I really hate that. When you're slipping a reel into a rod holder on a kayak or a boat, if you have your switch right here, there's a tendency for that rod holder to knock it around. So kudos to Pistafun for placing it right here. And that was a Stone ST40, Pistafun saltwater rated flagship spinning reel. Again, just like the Honor, I'm a little confused as to where this reel sits uh, in the market, uh, in the $80 to $100 price range of spinning reels. Uh, you know, this reel, you know, according to Amazon review dates at least, has been in the market for exactly three years as of this video. If you look on Amazon now, you'll see that uh, the reviews really started in January of 2015. So this reel's been on the market for three years now. In that time frame, Daiwa has come out with their BG, Tsunami came out with their Shield. Um, you know, there's a lot of competition in the $80 to $100 price range. There might have been a time when this reel could have competed with, uh, you know, the Battle 2, which was probably the leading reel in that price range. But since then, since the advent of the Shield, since the introduction of the new BG, um, this reel really kind of finds its sway to, you know, kind of the middle. Because it's a manufacturer that's really unproven, because it's a reel that's, you know, not really well known, a lot of people don't know about this reel. Um, you know, that that coupled with the fact that as I look through it, as I um, use it, you know, I do find some inconsistencies, uh, you know, with the manufacturing, with the details that I find online and on the packaging. And you know, that's a really competitive market. If you're going to price a reel at $80 to $100, you got to deliver. And uh, this reel, although it performs really well, um, you know, there's a lot of question marks. And uh, you know, I do appreciate the ability to sample this reel, but you know, you should know that if you do commit $80 to $100, um, you know, you might run into some inconsistencies with this reel. Now this sample's never given me any issues, um, you know, although I've noticed some kind of design, uh, you know, quirks that, you know, I pointed out in this review vid. I've actually had some pretty cool experiences with this reel, including a pretty awesome catch, um, you know, that my uncle uh, made on film. Um, this reel went onto my Travala, we took it bottom jigging, and check out this pretty awesome catch that he had using the Pista Funstone ST40. There you go. Um, Guys, he's upset. You know, he's, he's really British. <laughs> sure. Oh, yeah. Nice. All right. All right. Slow, slow him down. Keep him about like six, six inches below. Yeah. 
Yeah. Oh, 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 he's got, he's got a hitchhiker. Okay. Oh, no. Oh, oh, bubbling. Oh, dude, you got a hitchhiker. He was, look at that. Oh, oh, dude. Oh, my God. Dude, holy. Your first, well, okay, wait, what? What the heck? This is great. Did I, did I? So who was hitchhiking who? I don't know what it is about Piss of Fun spinning reels and link cards. If you watch my honor review vid, you'll definitely see that they go hand in hand. You know, one of the advantages of this reel versus the other competing reels like the Battle 2 or the uh, BG is the weight difference. This reel is definitely a lot lighter than that Battle 2 and the BG. Um, you know, this entire assembly, the ST40, comes in at only 10.8 ounces, which is really light. Um, you know, the Battle 2 is, uh, I think, a 12.8 ounce reel. The BG, I think, comes in at a hair over 14 ounces. So, you know, if weight is a consideration, if those ounces add up for you, if you have shoulder problems, but you're looking for a competent reel with a high drag, uh, you know, rating and a comfortable knob, then this would definitely be an option for you. If you're looking for a very specific reel with, for a very specific application, uh, you know, this reel definitely has a, uh, a mark. It definitely has a place on the market. You know, personally, uh, what I'm going to use it for is a vertical jigging. I'm going to stick it on my Travala, and uh, you know, the fact that it does have a pretty decent drag, the fact that it does have a really comfortable knob, and the fact that it's really light should make for a nice light to medium uh, vertical jigging setup. Um, it doesn't have as much line capacity as I would have wanted. Uh, I have, you know, drift fished with this uh, in 180 to 200 feet of water in California, and while there's enough line to go straight down, sometimes even with 30 pound braid, there's not enough line for a fast drift. So, you know, that's definitely something to consider if you're considering a reel like this um, for vertical jigging too. And just like the Honor HR30, I did communicate my critiques or at least my experiences with this reel to, uh, you know, the marketing group, the product management group at Pissafun. And instead of, you know, sending me another reel to test, really they couldn't do it because this is their flagship model. They sent me something pretty cool. Um, you know, in the six months that I've had this reel and the six months that I've also had the honor, I've been in communication with their product management group and their marketing group um, in regards to the development of their upcoming new flagship reel. And I've actually seen photos of, uh, you know, their new product under development that I can't share. But what I can share are these mock-up photos of what should be their newest flagship saltwater reel. This is the Piss Fun Spartan. As of this video, this is the exclusive first look at what should be Pissafun's newest saltwater rated flagship spinning reel. I mean, if you Google it today, you shouldn't be able to find any other images of this reel. So it's pretty cool that they've given me the opportunity to kind of, you know, quote unquote, break this reel to the market. If you look at it, it looks pretty darn cool. It has the, uh, you know, coloring scheme of the um, Pissafun reels outside of the stone. You know, they went with a black and blue, similar to uh, Abu's uh, Revo inshore or the Daiwa Saltist. And, you know, in Pissafun, uh, you know, tradition in these e-commerce uh, branded, uh, you know, reels, um, it should come in a lot cheaper than those reels. I'm not saying it's going to be just as good. I think they're sending me a sample. We'll see. But, you know, it should prove to be a pretty decent saltwater player. Has all the elements that you would want out of a saltwater rated spinning reel. It's all alloy, has uh, it's braid backing, has a nice big, uh, you know, EVA rounded knob that I really like. It does have a really big drag rating. I think 35 pounds is stamped at the top of the spool, um, you know, but maybe it is a much deeper spool than the Stone ST40. Maybe it's designed to have a huge line capacity to complement, uh, you know, a huge uh, drag rating. The one competitive difference that this reel might have versus other reels in its class is the fact that it has a brass main gear. And you won't find that in reels in the $100 range. A brass main gear, a brass pinion gear, a stainless steel main shaft. Uh, you know, it seems like they took a lot of what they learned from the failures of the Honor, or maybe some of the feedback they've gotten with failures of the Stone, and incorporated in to you know the build and design of a reel that should be really strong from the inside out and uh, you know they said that they would send a sample to me and I really look forward to it we'll see what they do after you know I post the review of the stone uh, but the balls in their court I definitely like an opportunity to test a reel out and show it to you guys because uh, hey that's what I do and until the release of the Spartan the piss of fun stone is piss of fun's current flagship spinning reel for now if you'd like to try one, link in the description below. As always, any purchases made through that associate link directly support content like this. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. This guy was biting that guy. Remember I told you about hitchhikers? Look at this. All right, guys. <laughs> Chris. What? This is my first hitchhiker. This is what I got. Fishing with Miguel. What? And 
<laughs> my nephew. Native anglers, ish with fish, and look what look what decided to jump on the elevator ride. <laughs>